praise the Lord, praise God, praise God, praise God. Good evening. God bless you. May I turn your Bibles, please, to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, reading from verse 25 all the way to the end. Ephesians, chapter 4, reading from verse 25 all the way to the end. Amen. There is a Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So if you, um, you should have some form of handouts. And I, um, Pastor Terrence got some there. For those of you who, um, who need one, you can just raise your hand and uh, get, make sure to get one tonight. Ephesians chapter 4. Why don't we just start in our reverence, reference uh, to the Word of God Amen. as we read these few verses. It won't be much reading tonight as we turn to Ephesians chapter 4, reading from verses 25. Yes. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor. For we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. Do not give the devil a foothold. He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Verse 31, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, Forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. God bless you. Take a seat, please. Praise the Lord. Amen. Share with you the last time we're together that the Apostle, thank you, the Apostle Paul gave us um, eight, as I check um, the, the scriptures there. God bless you. I noticed that there were eight um, portions of the scripture. That he says, do not. As a matter of fact, that scripture that we read tonight um, really uh, did not end there at verse 32. That scripture really ends at chapter 5 all the way down to verse 21. Mm -hmm. So really, if you should check in the scripture that begins in Ephesians chapter 4 from verses 17, it runs all the way into chapter 5 down to verse 21. Mm -hmm. And of course, hopefully we'll get to that portion sometime um, in the future. So I mentioned last week that there are eight areas that he mentioned do not. And of course, number one, he says, do not sin when you get angry. In your anger, do not sin. Verses 26 eight. Number two, he says, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. So, he's actually saying, you can be, it's okay to be angry. Just make sure you don't go to bed angry. Amen. That's what he's saying. Yeah. Whatever you do. Number three, do not give the devil a foothold. We'll look at that later. Yes, yes. Do not steal. Do not let, sorry, number, four, number five, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Oh, man. Amen. But only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, mm -hmm. that it may benefit those who listen. Number six, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Mm -hmm. Number seven, therefore do not be foolish. Yeah. 
Yes. <laughs> and it reminded me of the Lord Jesus Christ's words in Matthew chapter 7, in his conclusion of the what they call the Sermon on the Mount. Yeah, yeah. He says, Whosoever hear, verse 24 of Matthew chapter 7, yeah. he says, Whosoever hear these sayings of mine and puts them into practice. Yeah. Yeah. Or in other words, whosoever do them. Yeah, yeah, Scripture yeah. says they are like a wise uh, person yeah. who build their house upon uh, the rock. Yeah. That when the elements yeah. come, like the rain, the winds, and the flood, right. it beat against the house, but it could not fall because it had its foundation yeah, yeah, yeah. on the rock. Wow. Yeah. But whosoever hear these sayings of mine, Keep in mind Psalms 119, verse 89. Psalms 119, verse 89 says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Jesus Christ says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but not one chop of my word is going to fail. So if he's saying that whosoever hear these sayings of mine and do not put them into practice, it's like a foolish man. You see, number eight, so number seven says, do not be foolish, foolish yeah. but understand what the will of the Lord is. Yes. And number eight. Huh? No, no, you need to write these down because these may not be, and these are free. These are bonus. <laughs> Don't look at that. Even if I need to read them over again, then you guys just, because these are bonus. These are not in your notes. <laughs> in my studies, I got these. Because please understand, as I'm teaching this to you, remember, I'm also teaching me. Amen. So please don't think that I'm just studying to teach you. I'm studying so that I can be a better student of God's Word. Amen. So when you see me standing here, it's not just I'm teaching you because I'll always go over. This scripture in the book of Ephesians, I've read Ephesians, since you began Ephesians, I've been reading Ephesians every single week. So you, Pastor, how many times I've read through this book? And every time, I read the book of Ephesians, something jumped out that I didn't see ah. Ah. first time. That's the way God gives us revelation from his word. Yes, yes, yes. So, let me go over them again. Number one, in your anger, do not sin. Write them down, please. Leave that in your notes. Write them in your back or somewhere there. In your anger, do not sin. Yes, yes. If you need a handout, um, Pastor Terry's got some handout right there. They get you one hand. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Number two, do not let us, let me just paraphrase it. Don't go to bed angry. Well, uh, let me just help you with that one. It's just easier said that way. Don't go to bed angry. Make up before you go to bed. <laughs> amen. Well, amen. I'm not hearing no amen there. Amen. 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 <laughs> Number three, don't give the devil a foothold. Amen. Number four, if I'm going too fast, just raise your hand. This is place where I can I want to make sure you get this stuff. Number four, do not steal. Do not steal. Steal. Do not steal. So don't come and steal my, my don't steal my, <laughs> S-T-E, yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Do not steal. Number five, it's long. Let me say this. Do not let any unwholesome, that's a good word, mm. unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Mm. Many times, those words come out when we are angry, mm -hmm. unwholesome talk, when we are upset. Mm. Number six, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Do not grieve Him, please. We desperately need His help. Number seven, do not be foolish. Huh? And number eight. <laughs> Do not get 
drunk with wine. But be filled with the Spirit. Mm. Amen. Amen. If you want to get drunk, get drunk in the Spirit. Amen. They are not Amen. in your notes. Remember those? These are not in your notes. You just need to take them, write them down in the back, and we're going to go there. Yeah. We'll go through them somehow. So last week, I'm not quite sure where we ended up, but I'm trying to finish this tonight so that we can move into chapter 5 the next time we come together. I'm hoping that tonight we can have this quiz. Because we love quiz and destiny. Amen. 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 I'd have to rebuke the spirit of youngness. <laughs> I'm hoping we could have a quiz tonight. Amen. 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 Amen, Pastor Cooper. <laughs> but the off pause for them. The reason for that is because we are of one body. Amen. Amen. And like I said last week, that my hand cannot tell my foot I don't need you. Oh, right. Amen. Speak truthfully to your neighbor. Consider yourselves as members of one body. Amen. Am I glad you missed no. My friend told us last week, so I'm just kind of going over this and I'm kind of moving on. If, if, if I miss something, just tell me and I just go over. No, I missed it. Oh, you missed it. Okay, good. That consider yourselves as members of one body. And uh, this week, this, um, this week, um, there are churches all over the city that are coming together for a season of prayer. As a matter of fact, many, many churches are going through a time of consecration even while we speak. Some are doing 21 days, some are going through 40 days. Here at Destiny, we do not do 21 days, neither do we do 40 days. We do seven days intervals, seven days intervals. So of course, we did seven days in the month of January, mm -hmm. and in the month of February, we go again, seven days. Yeah. First seven days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven days. I started um, putting together the prayer agenda for the month of February. I started doing it already. I'm almost completed. I had to break to run off and take care of some other things. Today, there are a bunch of pastors that came all the way from Worcester as mm. they get together at Land of Judah today mm. for a time of prayer. Um, and they invited me to come to that meeting. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to go to that because I had to get the grandkids again. My friend who car, I used to depend on the Wednesday, the car decided to take a vacation. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> consider yourselves. We must consider ourselves as members, not of the same church, but of one body. I have to drive this home, please. Because I am connected to you. You know, we sing that song from time to time that, you know, I need you, you need me, we all. But sometimes they're just words. Yes. Because we do not treat one another yes. as though we are members of one body. Yes. Because within the church there is discrimination. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. Within the church, there is favoritism and racism within the church. And therefore, we slight one person over another. We, we treat one person better than another. And God says that there is no favoritism with yes, right. God. Because we are members of one body. Yes, yes. My role in destiny is quite different from yours. Yes, man. I am not called to do what you are called to yes, do. Amen. And definitely you are not called to do what I am called to do. Amen. We must recognize our offices. Yes. As once I recognize my office, I'm good. Amen. This is what I'm supposed to do? Yes. Fine. Yes. I'm not trying to compete with you. I'm not trying to do what you are called to do. Amen. That's why in destiny, everybody can do something. Amen. 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 Everybody can do something. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what parts you function 
whether you are a person who plays the guitar, or you are a person who sings on this microphone, or you are a person who serves communion, or you are a person who operates these things. I mean, whatever you can do, my heart desire is to help you to be the best. Amen. 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 Consider yourselves members of one body. And then, this area that we saw the climax last week, I really want to spend some time there today. Let me open up here. My, 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 my thing just moved from where I had it. So you got to move back from there. So here we are. In your anger, do not sin. I want to, I remember I said in chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, and even a portion of chapter 4, Paul really dealt extensively with the doctrine of the church. Mm -hmm. But here, he's not doing that here. He sort of shift his mode of operation and he began to teach us how we are to live this life. Mm -hmm. Because from verse 17, he's actually dealing with how you should live this Christian life. And he's saying, in your anger, which means that there are times when we will get upset. Yeah. Now, if you are a person who never gets upset, keep on living. Somebody will push you up one day. Come on now. Perhaps it's, in one sense, he was saying, take heed that you do not get angry, lest you sin. Mm -hmm. The reason for this is because when you get angry, Sometimes the anger causes you to blow out stuff from your lips. Mm -hmm. That you've got to go back and ask for pardon. If we consider anger as implying to displeasure, there are a multitude of cases in which a man may be innocently get angry. For example, he could get angry with everything that displeases God. Yeah. Today, I, someone sent me a little clip of what is taking place in Canada. And Canada is very soft regarding the whole homosexual agenda. I know I'm not quite sure if many of you are aware of it, but they just start pushing that whole LBGT curriculum within the elementary schools mm. in Canada and in California too. And because of it, they sent me the clip and uh, uh, there, there, is, there are places in Canada that they have already named the city yeah. after homosexual community. Right. And uh, I'm listening to uh, some of these people from those communities speaking who support this. And they're saying that parents, this is what they're saying. They're saying that children should be able to tell parents what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And in the classrooms, they're saying, well, yes, they're male and they're female and they're also other genders. Ah. Which runs up against the Bible. That's right. And what has happened is that, that it caused an awakening within the church that caused the church to begin to speak out against it. Because what they have done is they have removed from the hands of the parents the responsibility of caring for the children. So I can't teach, I can't tell you, don't teach my children that job. Exactly. Because if I speak against that, then it means that I am liable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus Christ, the devil is alive. I'm really sorry for those who do not have children as yet in this world. Mm. Those, our, that means our children who are not married as yet and are hoping to get married one day and have a family. By the time those children hit 20, so I'm looking at down the road. By the time those children hit 20, this whole place would be so corrupted and then it's getting ready for God to make judgment on mm -hmm. this country. Mm -hmm. In your anger. Last week I shared with you that anger does not just happen to people. Before one is angry, 
there must be a beginning, a starting point of anger. I said that for a person to get angry, the first thing that must happen is that person has to be disappointed. And a person could only be disappointed in someone who they trust mm. or someone who they love. Yes. Mm. Let me say it again. A person can only be disappointed in someone who they trust or someone who they love. As a matter of fact, if Mr. Trump should do some mess in the White House, does it cost me to go sleep? I still go to bed and sleep comfortably on my wife. Amen. I still have my meal. It doesn't have no effect upon me. Yeah. The only person in this world that can hurt me to the place but will create all kinds of mess inside of me is that girlfriend sitting back. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I spent most of my life living with her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Children could disappoint me, but they could never have the magnitude yeah. of hurt yeah. that this girl could have. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Because I love my wife. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. And that disappointment, because naturally we as mortal beings do not know how to deal with disappointment, we naturally get hurt from that yeah. disappointment. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. And when I get hurt, our natural tendency is to nurse that hurt. To nurse it. Uh, we tend to nurse it because what happened is that I want what? Revenge. The natural mortal response. Mm -hmm. I want revenge. Mm -hmm. I want to get back for the person who have done me wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to me, Sid. This, this is the beauty about this thing here. Because it opens up our eyes to see, oh my God, this is what we are dealing with. And uh, hurt produces in us what is called resentment. Mm -hmm. And resentment, of course, breeds in us unforgiveness. Yeah. That's where we got to be careful with it because unforgiveness, the Lord Jesus Christ has warned us extensively mm. to make sure that the devil doesn't gain that foothold yeah. Yeah. in unforgiveness. Very important. There are three major areas in our lives that the enemy can gain us. And when he gets in, he takes up residence mm -hmm. in the life of the person. Three areas. Number one, if you have unconfessed sins, mm -hmm. or let me say it better, secret sins. Mm -hmm. Secret sins mean Sins that nobody knows but you and Almighty God. I... Nobody knows but you and God. Mm -hmm. There are secret sins. Although no sin really is secret because God knows everything. Yeah. <laughs> Psalm 139 says that darkness and the light are both alike to him. So that means that there is absolutely no secret sin to him. Mm -hmm. But to mankind there is secret sin. Unconfessed sin. Psalm 6, 6, verse 18 talks about that. The second one is unforgiveness. Jesus Christ spoke extensively in unforgiveness. Yeah. Unforgiveness opened the door for the enemy to come in and take up residence. Mm. The third one is this one. That people may, and even within the church, take the, make light of it, is in the area of dealing with the occult. I... Crystal ball reading stargazing, got to read your astrology before you leave the house, your horoscope and all that nonsense. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness does not stay as unforgiveness because unforgiveness produces, and sometimes we think we forgive people. <coughs> I, I, I'm hoping that at some point of time I'll be able to deal with this area of unforgiveness. How do we really forgive people? Mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm going to deal with that at some point in time. Unforgiveness breeds bitterness. Mm -hmm. Because I fail to forgive someone, so I become bitter. Mm 
Mm. And bitterness produces anger. You see where anger is? Mm -hmm. Anger is not at the top. Right, right. So anger is way down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So you have disappointment, Torment. you have hurt, right. you have unforgiveness, you have resentment, mm -hmm. you have bitterness. You so it's all the way down yeah. before you get to anger. Mm -hmm. And anger will follow someone to the grave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People can't get into relationships because of the spirit of anger. Mm. Yeah. People cannot hold good jobs because of mm. anger. Go to the bank, and of course the teller behind get a little bit upset and get all lined up because of anger. I think, I think right here we need to just, no, before, before, before we go there, I just need to continue here in this area. And anger does not stay as anger, but it produces rage inside of us. Mm. And rage, when it comes out, rage comes out in some form. Yeah. It mm. comes out as wrath. Mm. And wrath, when it's finished, mm. you do something crazy. Mm. That's when you hurt somebody. Mm. Mental imbalance. Anger. The King James Version or the King James Dictionary defined anger as this. Anger, and it's not in your notes. Anger is a violent passion of the mind. I read the word right now somewhere. Anger is defined as a violent passion of the mind excited by a real or supporting injury, mm. usually accompanied with a propensity to take revenge. Mm. Anger is defined as a violent passion of the mind, excited by a real or supposed injury, usually accompanied with a propensity to take vengeance or to obtain satisfaction from the offended party. Mm. When I look at a young man who take the life of another young man in our city, and you look into his face and you see numbness, just yeah, yeah. numbness, um, cold. And you wonder, my God, how could you take another human being life? Then you need to go back and see what happened. Sat in my home with the father of a young man who was playing Russian roulette. Mm. Put the bullet in his gun. He and his father, along with some of his friends, were smoking, they were smoking marijuana in the house, Aye. and they were playing with this gun. Father and children mm. play. He put the bullet in the gun and spin the barrel. Yeah. The friends passed around, quick, 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 nothing happened. He put it in, in, in the gun, turned the barrel, and then put it in his head, and his brain ended up on the wall. Mm -hmm. And I sat with this father and one of my friends, yeah. the kid, inside of my home. I'm trying to put together the service of this young man. Mm. And I said to the father, I said, sir, your son, Live 19 years on God's earth. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Almost two decades, I said to him. I said, Sir, can you tell me one good thing mm. that he did for mankind? Mm. Tell me, did he shovel somebody's show and snow? Mm. Did he cut somebody's grass? Did he help somebody carry the groceries? Did he do one good thing? 
tell somebody. Mm. And the father looked at me. He looked like he had something in there mm. He looked at me and said, <laughs> mm. and looked at the friend and said to the friend who was sitting there, like, do you know anything good in there? Wow. Mm. And I thought, my God, mm. what kind of sin are we as parents putting out there? Our children are disappointed. And because they're disappointed, they are hurt. So therefore, they search for comfort from somewhere, and the streets is, let me say to every one of you, the streets is not friendly. The streets will destroy you, your children. So my John, I was just praying for the young man who's killed. If you know, maybe this weekend. And maybe his family goes to a church of a pastor and I quite know, I know it quite well. Wow. Joyce Meyer said it like this. Because Joyce Meyer dealt with anger. Yeah. Joyce Meyer said, if you want the great and mighty things that God has for you, mm -hmm. she says, you must get rid of the root of anger mm -hmm. and deal with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. She says, you can be bitter or better. Mm -hmm. Your choice. Mm -hmm. Oh! She says, you can choose mm -hmm. either to be bitter or better. It's up to you. If you are mad about something, instead of letting it ruin your life, Turn it into something good. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Overcome evil and anger by praying for those who hurt and abuse you. She said, <coughs> forgive them and be a blessing to them. It may not be easy at first, mm. but when you make the decision yes. and stick to it, God will take care of you. Yes, yes, yes. Joyce Meyer. When I read it, I said, I need that to share with the saints. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, I think the mere fact that the Bible is warning us about this area of anger is because he knows how easy, how yes. easy it is for us to get angry. And because anger opens the door for the enemy to gain a home, he's cautioning us. The old saying is true. To dwell above with the saints we know, that will be glory. To dwell below with the saints we know, that's another story. Mm -hmm. It's true as this statement may be, yet we are called to walk in love. Mm -hmm. And love must be sincere. Romans chapter 12. And then he says, not only in your anger, do not sin, but he says, do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. Mm. Do not let, and you know, and it's amazing, he's not talking to my couple, he's speaking to everybody, the saints. He said, if you are upset with somebody, make sure before you go to bed, make sure you get it right. Amen. And I, I think the question there is, you do not know if tomorrow belongs to you. Mm -hmm. You need to get it right. Mm -hmm. As the TJ man, this, I was at the bedside of a young man whose mother was about to transition over right in the Cali hospital. As he mm -hmm. called me and says, Cook, can you come and <coughs> pray with the family because Nana is getting ready to transition over. And I stood there by the bedside of this woman as I'm watching the monitor on the screen getting rid of the flat line and I'm, I'm talking to the family and I pray with the family and all that good stuff. And when I pray with the family, before I was through praying, the monitor says, mm. straight across. Mm. Mm. And as the monitor flat line, one of the daughters Mm. Uh, he, this woman had maybe about five or six kids. One of the dot, just one. Nobody else, just one. Start so screaming and yelling and grab onto the woman's feet. And, and I'm looking at one of the young men and saying, 
And the young man says, good. It's because she never made it right while mama was still alive. Mm -hmm. Cannot do it now. It is too late. Mm -hmm. Why we have or be it's good to practice saying, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Please what? Forgive me. Yeah. See, girlfriend back there, 38 years. I remember, you know, 38 years of marriage. One night, when mm. just, she just came to America. Mm. Let me tell you, my 38 years ago, mm. she came to America. She one day, of course, you know, she came home one day, and I learned from my daddy. Mm -hmm. When I come home mm -hmm. from work, mm -hmm. I expect to see my wife in huh? the house. Oh. And I expect to see food mm -hmm. on the table. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, sorry, I'm a West Indian. So that was me. So I came home that day, and she was at home, and there was no food on the table. Uh -oh. I... <laughs> and I was tired and hungry. Uh -oh. <laughs> I looked around, no tuna fish either. No. <laughs> I looked around in the house, she was not there. Uh -oh. All in her sister's house, and there she was having a good time. La, 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 la. Girlfriend having fun. Right. In the meantime, I'm sitting in a chair, huffing, huffing, trying to blow the house down. <laughs> When she came home that evening, she greeted me. Never forget, greeted me at the front door. When she greeted me, I grabbed like a pig. And she walked in, went into the shower, and she was taking care of herself in there. And I got up from her, I sat in the kitchen. I went to the bathroom, opened the door, and I went upside my wife, down one side, of course. I gave a piece of my mind. No one half of mine is missing right now. I gave her my Stop! <laughs> <laughs> she, your friend, came out from the bathroom with the room, went to the bedroom. She sat on the bed, crying. In the meantime, I'm sitting back in the kitchen, <laughs> puffing and puffing, <laughs> getting ready to blow the house down. <laughs> because there was no food <laughs> on the table. True confession. This is not what I read in the book. But you guys to listen to me, please. When I heard my wife in the bedroom crying, I got up from where I sat in the kitchen. I went to her in the bedroom. She was sitting on the bed. And I knelt in front of her. And I said, Honey, I am so sorry I've done this to you. Please forgive me. And I'm making a promise, as long as we are alive, this will never happen again. Amen. Listen to me, please. All I had to do when I came in, go to the refrigerator, <laughs> get two pieces of bread, sap some cheese, some lettuce, some tomato, make me some hot tea or hot cocoa, drink burp, burp, and wait for the girlfriend to come in. <laughs> Problem solved. You know what you said to me? If you didn't do that, tomorrow, listen, American Airlines, <laughs> I was out of here. <laughs> no. Realize I was doing exactly what I saw my father did. Yeah, yeah, that's true. We've got to break some curses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah some of us are carrying some pain yeah. in there because of what our parents did. Yeah. In the meantime, we are dragging this stuff everywhere we go. Right. We drag it. God wants us to be free. Amen. Yes. Sometimes we just we push the anger down, you know, like we just suppress it. Yes. And, and, and then all of a sudden it just flares up. Mm -hmm. Because it has to be dealt with. Yeah. 
yeah. see, because and we don't we don't deal with how we don't that just smile, give us an idea of that. But we've got to deal with the root. Mm -hmm. You know, she she used the word root. Mm -hmm. What is the cause? What is it that triggered mm -hmm. that level of anger? Yes, yes. But who hurt me? Mm -hmm. What happened? Is it mm -hmm. my father? Is it my mother? Is it my boyfriend? Mm. Is it my girlfriend? Mm. Is it my child father? Mm. I mean, you know, I mean, there, there are so many. Most times, that depth of anger comes from a relational right. hurt, yeah. hurt yeah. a relational yeah. pain, yeah. 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 where somebody, yes. <laughs> not somebody, I mean, if somebody, somebody borrows some money from you, and you may be upset, but it doesn't go that deep. No. Right, because that's right. a thing. Mm -hmm. See? But when that person is hurt, to the place I'm talking about is where the heart itself yeah, yeah, is yeah, hurt. Yeah. And the heart is the deep part of you that's called your soul. Yeah. Yeah. Your soul. Mm -hmm. This part of you, when this piece is experiencing what I mentioned, yeah. no man can fix this but God. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. It doesn't matter how much doctor you go to, mm -hmm. and doctor pop you up in pills and says, well, you're suffering from depression. Depression, not foot. Yeah. You deal with some stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's deep. Yeah. So true. Yeah. It's deep. It's deep-seated. The writer of the Hebrews says in chapter 12, he says, bitterness is like a root, root. that was weighed down, down yeah. inside of the heart. Inside. Yes, yes, yes. It mess, it contaminates the heart. Yep. And Paul is saying, whatever you do, don't go to bed. Yeah. 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 Get rid of it. Yeah. He's saying, talk to that person. We, we can't play out how to, um, to play to So I said, listen, man, let's talk about this tomorrow, but we can't go to bed and hang it. Let's just put a pause there. I said, you know what, tomorrow, let's, let's deal with this tomorrow. Let's not try to fix it yeah. tonight. But you can't go to bed and then. Amen. 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 You do not know if tomorrow morning you mm -hmm. wake up. Yes. Mm. So true. Let's ask you about your question. Yes, sir. You know me, I yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're talking about anger. Yeah. I'm not immune to it. I get angry. Mm -hmm. I'm human. But what are we supposed to do if somebody hurts our child? How are we, how are we, supposed, to, how are we supposed to react to that? Because initially... Hurt our child? Yeah, or, or, or offend our child or our wife or our husband. Initially, your first response is to defend. respond and defend. Like my situation, even being upset with God. Mm -hmm. When I came down with cancer, I told Rhoda I was angry with him. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know why. Why should I have to deal with this? It took me about three, four years before I gave my testimony out to Shamit. Still didn't understand why, but I did. Mm -hmm. Even when I went through the part of um, getting shot in my face and losing my eyesight. Up to this day, I'm still very bitter to my brothers and sisters because of how they treated me. So what am I supposed to do? And, and that's, that's a very good example that Brother Chin mentioned tonight. The, way, the first thing that Brother Chin has to do is that you really pray for them because most likely that was not out of ignorance. Mm -hmm. they, they did it and and it, it had to be out of ignorance mm -hmm. saying that they did it because they did not know mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and even though it looks like they knew better mm -hmm. and it may appear as though they knew better, but deep in the heart, if they knew better, mm -hmm. they would not have done that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So therefore, they, they use your mask and therefore the way that you have to see it, is that I have to pray for them that God would help them to see that what they have done is wrong. And you have to pray for them, yes. Yes. I'm, I'm dealing with um, a lot of change. And what I see coming at me is people in my face like this. And all I have to do is stand there. And there's, I mean, there's no blood of Jesus. I'm not thinking of nothing. All I'm doing is standing there. So, I mean, ah, <laughs> it's what I want to 
do, but I know that's not the right thing to do. How do you deal with that? The person's in your face, you report it, nothing's being done. How do you deal with a situation like that? Because forgiveness has to do with two parties, then you can only do your part. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. and, and, and the beginning, again, because this is spiritual, because remember, anger is spiritual. Mm -hmm. Please understand, it's not physical. It's not something that you can do. It's not tangible. You see the manifestation of yeah. anger, yeah. but anger is spiritual. Mm -hmm. And therefore, because it's spiritual, you can only deal with it from a spiritual side. Yeah. So you have to really place it into the hands of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Whenever you see, you deal with anger, deep seen anger, you definitely are going for the rule of God in it. And let the Lord place it in the hands of the Lord. Yeah. And ask the Lord to help that person, or help you to free you from holding that person. Yeah. And because unforgiveness is connected to anger, I want you to every piece, every, everything that I mentioned tonight is connected. It's like a, it's like it's like a string or like, mm -hmm. like a spider like a spider right. web. Yeah, web. It's all connected. Mm -hmm. Nothing is separated because you really begin with the root. Mm -hmm. And we watch really the root. Anybody knows what the root of anger is? Hurt. Yeah. 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 The root. The yeah. root of anger is hurt. I have been disappointed yeah. and therefore I get Pain. hurt. Hurt? Yeah. No. And when I get hurt, I do not know to deal with that. Right. Because nobody taught me. Mm -hmm. right, nobody. How am I going to deal with this stuff? Right. You, do, you dish it out to me. But how am I going to deal with Listen, I thank God for my prayer life. Yeah. I, I just want you guys to know tonight. Amen. I am the fourth child, the fourth of a family of ten, by the second boy. And I've experienced all kinds of disappointments in my life. But I developed, when I came to Christ, one of the things that I developed was a very strong prayer life. Yes, yes. Because I did not know who to turn to. Yeah, I did right, not have, yeah. I did not have a lot of friends. Right. As a boy coming up, I didn't have a lot of friends I could talk to. <laughs> so I just developed a prayer life. Mm -hmm. And my prayer life was so strong that I would spend hours yes. away from my family. Just talking to the Lord about stuff that bothers me. Mm. You, know, you know, you know. Sometimes it's easy to pray for all kinds of stuff, but you don't pray about the stuff that really is yeah. important mm -hmm. to you. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I can pray about you. You know, I can pray about you, Alice. I can pray about you, Reese. It's easy for me to pray for all of you guys, but it comes for me to pray about me and the stuff I am dealing with. Yes, yes. No. I don't want to pray with you about that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because the fact remains, I don't want you to think that there is stuff I'm dealing with. When the fact is, everybody deals with something. Amen. 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 Every so true. one of us in this room yeah. is dealing with some yeah. stuff. Amen. And as long as the enemy could make you feel as though you're okay, mm. then you are, you are held in, in a prison yes, camp. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not afraid. Yes, yes. One of the things that those who pray with me, these men that I pray with me, would hear me always pray about my family. Yeah. Always say we pray about me, Lord, I'm struggling with this area, Lord. They always hear me pray because you know what? I am not immune Amen. from the stuff that you are dealing Amen. with. Amen. Every one of us are dealing with something. That's right, so true. I told you guys when my daughter Trisha who passed was pregnant and the men who are part of my men's group know exactly how I felt when Trisha called me on the phone and says that she's pregnant. This is I was ready to go over there and battle by it. <laughs> Uh, raised up in the church, grew up in, you know, I mean, in, in my home, raised as a Christian child. I mean, she was out there drunk, running around the streets, and there comes. <laughs> I was upset, yeah. Kevin. I wasn't you know, those nice, <laughs> gentle Jesus, meek and mild. <laughs> no! <laughs> Got home recent, I'm going to throw her butt out. Mm. Uh. Yes. Heaven, Lord. That's <laughs> me. Yeah. It's Thompson that dragged me aside and says, don't you do that. Yeah. If you do that, the devil is waiting to eat her alive. Yeah. 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 All of us are doing this. Yeah. Yeah. So we sit to pray. 
So no quiz tonight. <laughs> 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 it was a week study. No, two weeks. Two weeks, yes. yes. You gave a definition of what anger is. Could you give it again, please? Yes, I will. Give me a second. Psalms 51 says this word. Psalms 51. Psalm 51. Psalm 51 in David's prayer. Mm -hmm. He says, verse 10, creating me a pure heart, O God. Yeah. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence or take me home. Oh. And you know, there's a portion of that tonight that says, yeah. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Yeah. We look at what? We can do to cause our Holy Spirit to be grieved upon the day. Mm. Look at it. Mm. Because I want you to see how easy it is for us to grieve the Holy Spirit. Mm. What we can do to cause the Holy Spirit to grieve. He says, Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and grant me a Holy Spirit. And then he says, Then I will teach you as your wisdom as you return back to you. And if you have done some more, he says in verse 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, you have not despised. Back to my sister asked me to give the definition of um, anger again as the King James Version Dictionary. The King James Version Dictionary, the NIV Dictionary, is almost the same way I prefer the dictionary that comes from the end of the King James Version Dictionary. Because that's the original. Anytime you hear anyone speak about the authorized version of the Bible, mm -hmm. whenever you hear someone is speaking mm -hmm. and it says, according to the authorized version mm -hmm. of the scripture, mm -hmm. of the hundreds of different versions out there, mm -hmm. the yeah. only version that's called the authorized version is the King James mm -hmm. Version. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Please know that. Yes. King James. The King James Version is the only one that's the one that's considered the authorized version. So, there it is. Anger, definition of anger. A violent passion of the mind. A violent passion of the mind. Excited by a real or supported or your supposed injury. Usually accompanied with the propensity to take revenge or vengeance, mm -hmm. or to obtain satisfaction from the offended party. So therefore, you hurt me, I want revenge. Mm -hmm. Natural response from those of us yeah. as mortal men. It's, it's who we are. It's who we are. So we need God's help to deal with these areas. Amen. Those of you who have been with me some time knows exactly where I'm going with this thing that's called the soul. <coughs> the soul of mankind. The soul. Or another word for soul is a H E A R T. The heart. The heart or the soul of the person consists of three parts. We are consists of the mind, of the emotions. And the love, and the will. That's who you are. Mm. When I look at you, <laughs> when I look at you, I see your body. Right. <laughs> That's what I see. Mm. I cannot see this piece. Mm -hmm. This piece is who you are, your yeah. soul. And your body and soul is no good without that. Yes, we, I, 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 Amen. Let us pray. So mankind has three parts. Wow. We have what we call the body, the soul, and the spirit. Everybody in this room has a body, a soul, and a spirit. When you go to a funeral, all you see is a body. The spirit jumps out of the body, mm -hmm. and the spirit goes back to who gave it. The man, the spirit goes back to God. 
Your soul belongs to you. Your soul is this. So just as the, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, everybody has these three. The problem that God is having with us is right here. Because this piece right here is what gets us in trouble. Our will, we are stubborn. We are rebellious. We want to do things our way. I, I did it my way. Yeah. New York. <laughs> When a person is hurt, yeah. and the place I'm talking about tonight, when a person is hurt, it's right in here. Yeah. That's in there. Yeah. Not here. Right. You see the manifestation here. Right, right. That's it. Right. Because this is what you call broken. Yeah. The heart is broken. Yeah. And when the heart is broken, no doctor can fix it. As a matter of fact. The scripture clearly tells us this in Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 and 10. That it says it's beyond cure. As I think we were in the NIV words. It says the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked. And the words that Jeremiah used, it's beyond cure. Which means that there is no doctor on earth who can fix a broken heart. Yeah. Doesn't matter how much you go to these counselors, right. yes, and all the good stuff. As a matter of fact, your heart is broken, it's best to go to a pastor who can yeah. pray for you. Amen. Amen. Right. Yeah. Amen. You go and pay your money to these um, <laughs> these counselors, they take your money and tell you, well, you need to go home and smile and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me that money, put it in the offering. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> they pray for you. These counselors are praying for you to take your money. Yep. Share it with you guys. Because a broken heart is going to be fixed by the person who gave you the heart. Amen. And that's God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And, uh, yes. So the, 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 um, the maniac in the garden yes. had legion. He was possessed by a legion of demons. Yes. And he, he separated himself into the graveyard. He was running around naked. And he was cutting himself and gnashing mm -hmm. and foaming at the mouth. So what part of, what, so were all of the demons, were the demons inhabiting all of that? Yes, in here. Everything. The, the mm -hmm. underlying soul, they possess the soul and the manifestation yeah, is what you see in the body. Running along in the tombs mm -hmm. and yeah, himself. Right. Right. So right. everything because, was infected like that? Yeah, because of course, because he was out of control. Yeah. Whatever happens, I'm not quite sure. How or what gave access to those spirits to get into him? I don't know. Maybe somebody had died and he was going through a grief. Yeah. I didn't go through like this, but I didn't do that wonderful job which did that teacher of grief. But grief, if you're not careful with grief, grief could open the door for the demonic to attack you. Yeah. Amen. Grief. Because grief affects what? Heart. Grief in the heart, yeah. and you see the manifestation in the body. You watch it, everything, everything. If you're happy here, yeah, you see the manifestation. Right. Yeah. You can only see the manifestation, but you can't see the real thing. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. So we see what happens inside of you by your reflection yeah. or by your face, your body, how you do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Folks come here and say, Pastor, you're a happy man. Well, because my heart is happy. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. I, 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 I choose, I made a decision that I will smile. I, I'm going to be a happy person. Mm -hmm. I just right. made a decision. That's who I am. See? So therefore, we protect our hearts. Uh, let, me, let me just say it better. Let me just help you guys right here. It's Proverbs. You guys can look at it. It's Proverbs chapter 4. Verse 23. Mm -hmm. In NIV. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure what the King James says, but the NIV says. NIV. And the word in the King James, in NIV, is G U A R D. One version means K W E P. -K. See that word right there? Is the same word that God gave to Adam in the garden. Yeah. Keep the garden. I pray 
place in the garden. You are free to eat from anything in this garden except, and that word except caused a problem with the will. Because the man says, Why are you trying to keep me from that tree? So the horse can see the problem. And I mentioned the last time that when Eve took up, when Eve disobeyed God, nothing happened. Nothing. Society keep on going like everything else. Yeah. But when Adam took that and ate, chaos happened to mankind. Because God did not give Eve that responsibility to keep. But to God, God gave that responsibility to Adam. So, Adam violated it. And here we are today. Sickness, death, confusion, crime, prisons, all kinds of mess, bills, yeah. <laughs> you name it. All this stuff that we deal with down here, none of that is in the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All of that is here. Yeah, hallelujah. Poverty. Sickness. What was the health of money? Clothes. Cold weather. Snow. Falling. Bent knees. All kind of stuff. <laughs> all that Amen. stuff is all because of what somebody did. Somebody did, yeah. Confusion. And the world continues. The world continues. The world continues. Can I ask a question? Yes. Because this is in chapter 4 also. It said in that when he went down, when Jesus descended, descended. when he said he descended before he ascended, yes. so he went to the lower part of the earth. The lower regions Jesus. of the earth, yes, correct. So there are two compartments. At that time, two compartments. Yes, 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 yes. The unrighteous and the ones that were waiting for the promise, which would be Abraham and the others. Oh, that's not that part that he went to. He came to the lower parts of the earth. The, the lower parts of the earth. The lower regions but they say he preached to them. Yes, he right? preached to the spirits. When the grave opened up and people started to walk. Do you believe that he preached to the unrighteous people also? Or are they waiting for the tribulation? Oh, 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 that's a big question right there. <laughs> when Jesus Christ went down, that was not why he went. That, that, was, that scripture that you referred to there, that, that's not that. That's not that. That's not the no, no, no. But that's a different scripture. But I know, it, captive, though. I know the scripture you're talking about. Yeah. He had, yes. But that's not for that. That's that's for different. Because if you check on the beginning, you know, yeah. you read the whole context of the scripture. Okay. The Bible says he gave when he went there, he gave gifts to men. Remember those gifts he's talking about there? Okay. Yeah. That's he was he was establishing what is called this new group that's called the church. He was doing something else. He didn't just go there to free mankind, but he went there, he was doing something, he was establishing a new group. That's called the church. Yeah. So in this group, he gave gifts. And the gifts are the apostles, the, the yeah. evangelists, the the, you know, all these, these gifts. He gave them to help to build this new... When you think really call it, it's a group of people. It's, called, it's really a kingdom. He was trying to establish, his goal was to establish another kingdom. A different kind than mankind is used to. We yeah. were not used to that because before he came, there was no such thing as. Because we didn't have the blood, that we didn't have Jesus blood, but that was the oh, just the blood of the goats and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but but these these gifts that he's talking about, they were not they were not around. The apostles and the teachers, and I mean the, 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 the prophets yeah. and all those were not those were those only came after Christ mm -hmm. after went the, after he descended to those regions yeah. and he gave them gifts okay. to men to establish this thing. Okay. You're talking about when he when he died and he went down. That's yeah. that's that's but different. When he died, yeah. he went down and he preached yeah. to them. Yeah. Yeah. Give me that key. Yeah. That's right. That's written right there. You find the scripture there. The scripture you're talking about is written in Hebrews chapter two. Hebrews chapter two, verse fourteen. That's what, where you, what you're referring to is there. It's, it's right there in Hebrews chapter 2. That's different. That's, okay. different. that's a different mission, right? Okay. Yes, yes. So that's not the captivity led captivity? No, no, no. no. That's, a, okay. that's different. That's okay. different. Captivity. Anything else? Hebrews 2 14, yes. You could read the scripture there. Yeah. Um, yes. So what happens to our soul when we die? What happens when someone dies? Mm, when Thank you. When soul. With the soul? Yes, what happened? All right, well, well, let's talk about that for a minute as we have one minute. Can you guys give me a minute? Sure. All right. When someone dies, 
the first thing that happens to that person, when you see that flat light from across there, it means that this piece of that person jumps out and says, see you, going back to Papa. And this thing here lies lifeless. Nothing happening in there. This piece that I talked about earlier, that part is spiritual. Mm -hmm. You don't see it, but it exists, lies there. And in First Thessalonians chapter 4, the Bible speaks about what's going to happen when Jesus Christ returns. And that dead in Christ. Christ. He's not talking about this. Because this, that's the what? That's the what? back. He's not talking about this. He's talking about this. Mm -hmm. So, quickly, come alive. You'll have a new body, brand new body. First Corinthians chapter 15 speaks about it. Brand new body, a different kind of body. A body that is not like us. It's a body. And it's amazing, you know, the portion of scripture when Jesus Christ raised from the dead, the Bible says he, he had a dinner and he ate fish. He raised his men, he met men. For four days, but I want you to know that Jesus didn't need to eat fish. Right. He just ate fish to show these men that he could do it, then, but he didn't need. He doesn't need the sustenance that we do. His body doesn't need fish mm. because I don't think. I mean, I didn't say, it, but I don't think that that body had blood in it. Mm. Mm. Amen. I don't think that blood, that right. blood, that body that Jesus Christ rose with, didn't have blood in it. It's a different kind of body. Mm -hmm. It's called an uncorrupted body. Yes. So it's a different kind of body. Can I follow up on what you said? Yes. Okay. So the truth is, Jesus, um, today you'll be with me in paradise. Mm -hmm. Lazarus. Mm -hmm. Look at the chasm, the rich, the rich, the rich man. man. Yeah. And then him, and he's like, if he's thirsty, can I go over there and know there's a big mm -hmm. chasm? Right? <laughs> so he died. <laughs> The judgment seat. Now my question is, if we're waiting for the dead to arise, then where are they? Are they in paradise? They already are. Oh, yeah. Are they in paradise? Because if you're talking about rapture, and the dead shall rise up to meet him, the people who are dead in Christ, then where is their spirit while it's waiting to rise up to meet him? Isn't that what you're saying? That's what you're well, saying. No, the no, church is taken up first for the rapture. The church is not there. No, I was just asking like, what happened to the soul. Like, right, right. Like, okay. That's what she's saying. That's what she's saying. That's that spirit. Where is that spirit? Where so is that spirit? That's the soul yeah. and the spirit are different. Yeah, yeah the, soul the soul and the spirit is different because yeah. the spirit is life. Yeah. And she's talking about the soul and the heart. That's what she's talking about, really. But let's, let's make sure I, I know what you're talking about. Where, where is that person? Thank you. That's, I think that's, that's what the spirit is to be asking. What happens to this? To this person, what happened here? That's it, right? We all know what happened here, right? Yeah. We all we all know. There, there, there's no questions asked about this. Anybody's confused about this? No. no. Anybody confused about this? No. That's right. The big question is here. Am I right, Shelley? Yes. This was you on. Ask what happened to those people right there. Well, according to the scripture, of course, according to the scripture, we are waiting for the resurrection, and that. Waiting, we are waiting in, we are waiting in, in Christ. In Christ. It's in Christ. So where is Christ? Everybody yeah. knows? Then Christ. Then Christ. And when you read that scripture from First Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 13 all the way to verse 18, it kind of helps you to understand that whole 